So I've got another one of those made up and this time it worked perfectly, but you know what they say, measure twice and cut once. Well, that only works if your measurements are correct in the first place. And whilst I had the alignment worked out perfectly for the one that broke, the alignment for this one is way off. And why is that? That is because I forgot to deduct on my measurements from the thickness of the metal. From where it starts to this bend, to that bend, to the curvature, and to the bend there. So it just escalates as it goes around. Which means, as good a piece as that is, it won't work. So, third time's a charm. Let's see. My new website is finally up and running and I'll be including a link in the description section for all the reference material that I'm using for this build. So the biggest trick with this piece is trying to get that curve in there without straightening this piece. So that's not too bad because it's held into place, but I've got to be careful that I don't open up that bit again. Now that I've got a couple of high spots so I can work off, I can put in the vise with a towel to protect the metal, uh, and then start closing that up to get that curve that we're after. Now that gets me a lot closer, but you can see that that edge is not right. The biggest thing is I've got to maintain these two grooves in a parallel line. So now it's back to the anvil to shape that piece out with a piece of pipe that's the right diameter. So that's getting pretty close. Uh, really what I want to do is just adjust it a bit so I can bring those lines so that they're in more in line with each other. And to pull all those bits into alignment, what I've made up is an internal jig made out of wood that matches the internal diameter of what I need for the finished piece. And that should pull all those pieces into alignment. So the other thing that this wooden jig does for me is to produce the step in the final fold. So I've got this marked on the timber for where I need to make those folds and I've just clamped the pressing piece back in place so that it holds in place and won't slide around. Now I can stick the whole thing back in the vise and start working out those folds. so good. So that's a bit of a rough clean up started on that one and I think it's coming out quite well. As it turns out I was destined to stuff this one up because it gave me a piece to practice on and you can see that I stuffed that up so I'll be able to use this as a practice piece and get that technique 100% before I tackle the final piece. So apart from a whole lot of hammering I've started working out some of the other components. I've decided to print myself out an enlarged photo which just gives me something to follow to make sure that I'm not creeping off scale when I'm working on things. I've based this scale on blowing it up to match the size of the handle and whilst that handle is not exactly the same as the type that they've got there, the scale is enough that allows me to follow along pretty closely so that I'm keeping track of what I'm doing. It 
it does show me a couple of things. The, the piece that I've prepared for the top section there is pretty dead on as far as size is concerned, but the resin piece that fills that gap is still quite a bit out of whack and needs that space in there bridging so that it's a neat fit. That piece will be cast as a single solid piece and then cleaned up and milled out where I need it to be as far as the trigger and all that sort of stuff's concerned. Apart from that, you can see that I've already milled the slots in there. I've got a step section that has to drop off the height of the metal there. And that forward piece there is a bit long. It probably needs to be trimmed off probably more like around about there. I have been able to find a barrel piece, which itself is a bit long. It'll be trimmed up to match so that I've got a mounting point in here somewhere. And the cut length of this piece will pretty much be determined by where that forward heat shield is mounted to it anyway. Still haven't milled any slots into the rear stock yet, but it looks like I need a bit more practice on that anyway, judging by that other piece I showed you. But you can see how that will fit there, and you can see pretty much where it'll butt up once that's done in the aluminium as well. I have found the piece I need as far as the magazine's concerned, but this is the only piece I've got of it at the moment, so I'm gonna to have to track down a little bit more of that, but that's gonna be the positioning and sizing of that. And once I've cast this piece, there'll be a slot milled through that so that this aligns better into there as well and doesn't sort of wriggle around. So slowly but surely it's starting to come together and starting to look a little bit more like something. But that's pretty much the update for this time guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.